So summer's nearly over and I thought I'd go over the weirdest summer experience I ever had and this was a couple of years ago. Um, it, it's not as bad as the title might suggest but it was still just completely fucking horrific at the time and I don't mean it was like a weird summer experience where you know you have like a gangbang on the beach with like a bunch of stray dogs and empty syringes and fucking regrets and stuff like that um basically i went to marrakesh in morocco a few years ago and marrakesh is one of those places where it's it is awesome and it is amazing but there's a lot of obviously culture differences to where i'm from obviously england and um obviously there's going to be fucking culture differences because england is just a strange place in general and um there's quite a bit of theft and like petty theft and because there's quite a bit of poverty out there as well people will try and make money in the best way they possibly can and a lot of the ways are extremely clever and this way was also what actually happened to me while about to tell you was also one of the ways of fucking making money as well so anyway the way with marrakesh is you either stay in two types of places if you're there as a tourist you either stay in like a Riyadh in the center which is traditional moroccan housing or uh, you stay in a hotel, and the hotels tend to be kind of complexes, like really fucking swish hotels with everything in them. Uh, so if you didn't want to go outside, then you wouldn't have to. But anyway, you know, I'm a culture vulture and stuff like that, so we went outside loads. We went and got taxis into the centre, into the, the souks, which are like the massive markets, and explored a lot, etc, etc. So we'd been there maybe like five days, and we were kind of getting cabin fever in the hotel, as I said, we've been out a few times already, so we decided to get a taxi into the centre, maybe midday, and uh, just look around. <clears throat> so basically, we get out of this taxi, and we're looking around, there's all these amazing buildings and stuff, and, you know, we're just walking, and all that shit, and we didn't know what anything is, we didn't have any kind of tour booklets or anything on us, we went with a tour guide or anything like that, because I, I don't like to do stuff like that, just see stuff on your own, learn, and that's... That's where you're going to have the most fun and experience, in my opinion, anyway. So anyway, this guy, who like looked kind of raggedy, but no more raggedy than anyone else, because it was fucking like dusty as shit, it's like 49 degrees, everyone's just melting and just like, ah, fuck this heat, you know, kind of thing. And um, he starts just like explaining in almost, in just amazing English, like this is this, this is this, and he just looked like this, just a normal civilian, just a normal you know, guy who lived in Marrakesh, and he was like, this is this, blah, 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 and I was like, fucking hell, you know, turned to my girlfriend, well, you know, this guy telling us all this shit for, for nothing, this is amazing, and it was incredibly fucking naive, but uh, it was, yeah, it was, it was funny at the time, and just pretty boss as well, so we keep walking, and we're obviously in this massive open space in the centre, and he's saying, you know, this tall building over there is this, this was used for blah, 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 etc, etc, which, you know, is fucking fine, it's great. And it, the whole situation just got dark, like, really quickly. Basically, it's so hard to explain, like, when someone's helping you and you're finding something interesting, you tend to just lose concentration and your kind of awareness skills seem to go as well. And, like, within probably like 45 seconds we were down the back of the souks like i said it's like this massive like a few mile long interwinding marketplace and um yeah we took like a left turn and it was kind of like if anyone's seen the first episode of homeland where like claire danes is running through like the markets like with the hood up and stuff and you know she's got that like claire danes stupid fucking claire danes cry face on she's like yeah, sir. you know like that but no one was crying and i wasn't dressed as a blonde woman um not that night anyway so anyway we kept going on down there and it was like oh holy shit you know we don't know where we are now and this guy was like you know this is this blah 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 so um we keep on going and then it got really fucking dark like we went and i don't mean like light wise we were it was just the situation went fucking even darker so we took like another left turn and it just got claustrophobic super quick and just really fucking weird and we couldn't remember the path back and i think that was the idea of how he'd led us down there is that we couldn't um you know get out on of our own accord these were like extreme locals and stuff like that so whether they'd help us or not i don't know they probably would have but there's no taxis or anything and no main road by there it was just like alleys like covered with canvas and shit and it was more like the traditional side but anyway there was this guy and he was like 
fucking skin and animals and shit and like the blood was just running down the fucking path no one gave a shit and it was just odd and fine whatever you know meat's got to come from somewhere and next minute we're getting led up these stairs and it was like one guy was behind us both and the guy who'd led us there was in front of us so we couldn't really turn around it was like a really narrow staircase and i was like holy shit and like turned to my girlfriend my girlfriend was kind of panicking as well and it was like oh this is quite surreal and um he, like, opens this fucking, like, weird, crickety door, and it's, like, super dark. I'm just like, ah, what the fuck, you know, what, what the fuck's going on? And um, we end up in this room anyway, and there's another group of people in there, or I think we're, like, I think they might have been, of a, like, American tourists. Just, I think they were American, possibly Canadian. I don't think so, though, because they weren't extremely friendly. And, um... <laughs> They were like, you could see they were panicked and trying to get out. And in this this room was just like rugs and like scarves and carpets. And we thought, all oh, right, okay, like, you know, this isn't out of the norm, really. Like, we'd been led there to do business. I thought, you know, I was going to get led there to get like maybe lose a liver or after film like gay porn with like a Moroccan sheep or something like that. You never know. And anyway, this guy comes out the back, and I swear to fucking God, this guy's like the tallest Moroccan ever. He's like six foot eight. He's fucking looks like traditional Moroccan. He looked, without sounding racist, like fucking Jafar from Aladdin, this guy. And he had this really like, yeah, it's kind of voice, you know, like, like, and it was fucking weird. Like, it just was super weird. And, um, Anyway, they sat us down, and it got even weirder, but in a completely different way. And they bought some, like, mint tea, so we drank some mint tea with them. And uh, this guy was, like, chatting to us, and it was a family-run business and stuff like that, and which was fine. And we didn't have much money on us, because we'd only popped out just to kind of see the sights. And um, this guy basically had been trying to sell us... This Jafar guy, not the guy who led us there. He'd, like, gone in the back somewhere to do something or whatnot. And um, he was trying to sell us, like, a rug. And the rugs there are, like, you know, all hand-woven and shit like that. So, like, anywhere from, like, £500 to, like, 3000 maybe £5,000. And besides the point, you can't really get one of them back on the plane anyway. So, you know, it was that was fine. And... Um, he was like, oh, you know, you've got to buy this. And he was showing us everything. He was showing us it made. And we were there for like three hours just sweating, full of mint tea and just fucking regret. And um, basically we were like, oh, we haven't got any money on us. And it just fucking turned as well. He was like, what the fuck, blah, blah, blah. You know, gave you mint tea, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And to cut a long story short, we had to spend basically like another hour there, like talking this guy down as to how we got there and shit. And it, it, it was just a horrible fucking atmosphere. We weren't allowed out when we tried to go to the door either. Like on numerous times, we tried to head for the exit and couldn't get out and we were blocked off. And it was, you know, kind of held hostage. So in the end, we had to buy like a camel wool scarf for a gift. And, um,. Then we were let go, and the guy put us in a taxi. And I think that was the last time. I mean, we were going home a few days later, but that was the last time we went into the the souks in the day. But it was uh, it was fucking horrible. And it, at the first minute, you know, you think you're gonna die, probably for no reason whatsoever. And then the next minute, you're like, oh, I'm getting mint tea. And then the next minute, you're not allowed out the door. And then the next minute, you've just bought a fucking camel wool scarf, even though you're a fucking man. Nothing against men who wear camel wool scarves. That's fine if you if you want to do that. That's fine. But I just thought I'd share my weirdest fucking summer story with you guys. And I hope you enjoyed it. And I will see you soon.